the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. It's now been nearly a month since the live unboxing, and in that time, I've printed around 140 hours, give or take a little, and have been traveling a lot with it. And this time, boy, have I been surprised. What? Well, that's odd. Anyways, going back to the Bamboo Lab, I honestly wasn't entirely sure what to expect, as I'd seen a lot of people online have positives and negatives, and after owning a couple Creality and Prusa machines, I wasn't entirely sure if they'd be able to beat the Prusa machines in particular. Either way, I finally decided to try it when I had a lot of orders coming in and, as a bonus, saw it was available for 200 bucks. So with that, I decided to jump into it. This all leads to the live stream, where pretty much the entire time I was being surprised. It was extremely easy to set up, I didn't really have to assemble anything, and ironically, the part that actually took the longest was just letting it do its calibration. So I wasn't really even needed, but felt like I should stay because I was doing a live stream. And then once that was done, I was immediately able to print my classic articulated lizard, which turned out pretty flawlessly. It did have a little bit of troubles getting the first legs to move, but once they were free, it was all good. So that test was a success. The craziest part about the Articulated Lizard is that it did all of this in 45 minutes. And in comparison, the Prusa Mini takes 50 and an Ender 5 takes an hour and 38 minutes. But the Prusa Mini and Ender 5 don't include the print preparation time, whereas the Bamboo Lab does. So that 45 minutes is really more like 40 minutes, so 10 minutes quicker than the Prusa Mini with Input Shaper. And that's with a pretty small object. It gets compounded the larger the object is which is pretty crazy. That wasn't even it during the live stream. As I found out, this printer actually has a camera. It's actually right here and can get some pretty cool looking time lapses. Sure, the camera quality isn't amazing, but the fact that it had a camera really surprised me. So first impressions were that this thing blew my expectations out of the water. Now the main question was whether it could continue to pump out orders for the next week. Sure enough, the Bamboo Lab pumped out those orders pretty well, all of them faster than the Prusa Mini using Input Shaper. The only complaints I have is that the Bamboo Lab ends up spitting out a lot of purge filament in these form of these little blobs. Though at the same time, this is actually a double-edged sword, as the Prusa Mini will just ooze it out and doesn't have a way to spit it. Whereas the Bamboo Lab will just like use this little plate and push it, which is actually quite clever. The only issue is, is that it's quite a lot, which is the complaint. But again, the Prusa Mini just oozes it out, and while it's not a lot, can result in it going in the prints. Another minor complaint on the Bamboo Lab is that the top layers of the prints often have these little defined markings. They're more defined than the Prusa Mini or the XL or really any other printer I've used, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm not sure if that's because of speed or if that's something else I can change. Either way, it is kind of a pain. Final minor complaint is that the first layer using this build plate can leave this white residue which you just use a heat gun to get rid of, but it's kind of annoying. Originally I was actually planning on swapping to the Prusa mini build plates, but can't, at least doesn't seem like it's very feasible, as the build plate is actually slightly different on the Bamboo Lab, which is kind of unfortunate because I really do quite like the Prusa mini build plates. In fact, the Prusa build plates in general have been pretty nice. That said, if the Bamboo Lab can continue to have first layers as perfect as they have been, by that I just mean literally being what the Prusa XL advertised, the perfect layer every time, then the occasional white markings on the bottom is totally worth it. Though again, I think you could just swap the build plate and it would go away. Woo! Switching it. The minor problems aside, I actually have found this machine to be great for prototyping as it automatically connects to the internet, well at least once you connect it to the Wi-Fi, and then when you do that, you can just send your prints directly to the printer, so it will automatically start printing. This is nice because I don't ever have to do anything with the SD card, I can just leave it in the printer, and then I can hear the startup noise, know it's all good, and then hear the ending noise. Things like the startup and ending noise have actually been really nice. Originally, I wasn't so sure about how I'd like them, but it really does help the printer feel more polished and is just a nice quality of life feature. Really, this printer really does feel like a more polished machine, both in looks 
and the features that it actually has, like I just mentioned with the noise feature and connecting to the internet, and then even things like unloading the filament and loading it. It's somehow easier. Again, I think that's partially because it is a direct drive printer. Why Prusa ever did a Bowden tube, I'm not entirely sure. My only real guess would be price, but again, somehow this is $200. I guess the fact that it's coming from China probably helps quite a bit, but still. Ultimately, concluding first impressions of the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini is that Bamboo in general really does deserve the hype. It's been a pretty fantastic machine for the little bit of time that I have had it. And really the only question now is how long will it last and will there be any future issues and any big major problems? For example, the XL, that's the main one I'm gonna be coming back to, was pretty good in the beginning. And then over time was, eh, it was, it's still great. And I still really like it. It's just had more problems than I would like for it, especially for its price tag. But again, this doesn't really have that issue with the price tag as it's $200, so I guess we'll see. At this point in time, I really can't see myself getting another Prusa Mini as $200 and this feels like an upgrade more than a downgrade. Right now, the A1 Mini is hard to compete with as it is direct drive, faster, has a camera, linear rods, no live Z adjust, and we'll see if that's a, really a plus, and then a couple others I mentioned earlier. Well, on the other hand, the advantages to the Mini really only come down to Prusa having a better reputation with long-term reliability and upgrades over time. Oh, and I can't forget open source. I also personally like the Prusa Mini display better than the Bamboo Lab, purely because I'm more of a fan of the little control knob, the 3D printed control knob, and the fact that it's not touchscreen, which is a downside for a lot of people, but I personally don't like touchscreens that much. Another thing that I like about the Prusa Mini is that it does have 3D printed parts, which means if something breaks, I can easily replace it, and it just feels more like in tune with the hobby. But again, that is not for like a business perspective. So as a business perspective, it would make more sense to get this as you can just buy the replacement one. Both printers are pretty portable as they are pretty small, but the Bamboo Lab especially is very easy to carry around and trust me, I've had a lot of time to travel with it over this last month. <laughs> yeah, it went from Idaho to Utah to Arizona. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even end up using it in Arizona and also I didn't get pictures so that's kind of a shame. Oh well. <laughs> Going into this, I truly hoped that the Prusa Mini would be able to compete with the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, but unfortunately, I really can't say so. I can't even really recommend the Prusa Mini in comparison to the A1 Mini, as the A1 Mini just, at this point in time, is that much better of a machine, which is kind of crazy. It truly does feel like the upgrade that the Prusa Mini has been needing for a while. In fact, the Prusa Mini came out in 2019, so, it would actually make sense for this to be more of an upgrade. But yeah, it has not happened. Right now, I really just hope Prusa can catch up as I do like them as a company, them being open source and all they've done for the 3D printing community is pretty cool. But the Core 1 looks nice, but again, it still seems a little bit behind what the Bamboo Lab feature set is. So yeah. There is the Prusa XL, so that's hopefully gonna keep them running for a little bit, but Bamboo Lab might have one. It might even come out January from the looks of it. At least they said they were gonna have a new flagship printer, so I guess we'll see what happens there. I guess just time will tell whether Prusa actually succeeds. In regards to the A1 Mini, if there's any major problems, I'll definitely have an update video, and I'll probably have a full review like six months to a year from now, but right now, it's looking pretty good. If you don't have one, or you don't have a Bamboo Lab in general, then I would consider it. $200, that's like what an Ender 3 is. And actually, I still think you can buy an Ender 3 at 200. That's just crazy. They're both Chinese companies. Go towards the Bamboo, the Bamboo's better. That said, Creality might have some new printers. I haven't tested any of their newer ones, so. It's been a while. The last printer I got from Creality was the Ender 5 just really did not like their reliability. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye. The 
Bamboo Lab also has other features that I didn't even mention. And that is like a filament cutter up there at the top little nozzle where you can just cut it. The fact that the PTFE tube isn't needed, that was like the biggest problem I had with the Prusa Mini. If you go watch this video, you'll see those issues that I had with them. And then also the fact that it can do multicolor prints with a simple AMS edition. I didn't end up getting it, but it does look like a cool addition, aside from the fact that it wastes a lot of filament. Again, the XL is nice on that standpoint.